Hi there, this is Paul Colmsey from Glimmer Software and in this short video I'm going to demonstrate a couple of different ways that you can embed content from uh, various sources online uh, into rich Glimmer maps to create really interesting knowledge artifacts. So if you're not aware of Glimmer, it's basically a knowledge visualization tool uh, and it uses a visual notation, not dissimilar to mind mapping, but it has a little bit more rigor than mind mapping. And so the easiest way is to show by demonstration. I'm currently in the Glimmer um, uh, uh, mapping screen and I'm just gonna go into author mode so that I can actually make a map. So here we are in author mode and, and I can use the user interface to create nodes and connect them and do things like that but I actually prefer to use the keyboard shortcuts, I find it faster. So I'll talk through some of those keyboard shortcuts as I go. First up we're going to add a question, so I type the letter Q into the map canvas and the question is how, uh, oh sorry, examples of how we can embed content into rich glimmer maps. So that's what we're going to explore and I'm going to now answer that question with an idea which is the letter I and up comes a little light bulb node which is the idea uh, and so it can be embed um, YouTube video snippets into maps. And it's actually pretty easy to do. I've just I've got YouTube here already open and I'm actually was just watching a video about how to learn in any language in, in six months. So if I grab the URL of that YouTube video and copy it to the clipboard and I come back to Glimmer, here's how I do this. On the right is a little, I guess you'd call it an authoring uh, tool toolbox and one of them is YouTube and so that if I click that, that brings up a little video player. If I paste that YouTube URL into the video and press go, that will actually load that YouTube video and you can see it now starting to stream. Now um, what I can do at this point is I can right click record video, start position, and it will actually record or it's tagged or made a note of the time in which that video was playing when I did this. If I come across all the way to say about midway through, okay, and I can right click and go record video stop position, that note has now been tagged with those two points in time. And so I guess the pro this is, is this. I can say the pro is this allows mappers to embed video uh, specific parts of videos without having to watch the entire video. So that's actually kind of, that's quite a cool, uh, uh, cool capability. Um, another pro, uh, and again, best done by example, if I go back to YouTube, it doesn't have to be one video. I can have one map with multiple different videos. For example, if I come back to YouTube and I look down here and I see that there is this why I read a book a day. So let's grab that YouTube video and bring it up. Once again, video has come up, I grab the URL, I copy it to the clipboard and I come back to Glimmer. I now replace this old video URL with this new one and that new YouTube video starts to play. Uh, and so the other pro of this approach is multiple videos can be embedded into a single map and just like previously let's just say he starts talking about interesting stuff at about the two minute mark something around there record start position you don't have to record an end position the video will just play but in this case let's say that was only about a one minute snippet that was really powerful for me right click record video, stop position, and it's locked in. If I go back to this video, this first one, you'll see straight away it's going back to the original TED Talk. If I play this video, we're at the one I just tagged. So really nice, powerful way for you to bring together your thoughts on key bits of video footage that you might find interesting. So picture this in a lessons learnt project scenario where the project team might have conducted extensive interviews among the team as to what worked and what hasn't worked, you can create knowledge maps that then draw attention to specific lessons and you've get, literally got the visceral rich knowledge of the video of the person living those lessons or, or talking through them. So that gives you an example of videos but it's not just videos. Uh, you can also embed other forms of content. So a next idea is embed um, other forms of content 
and I'm going to hook a question node off this one. So I'll let a queue and the question is such as. And the answer to that is slide share slides. Now, in case you've not heard of SlideShare, a lot of people at conferences will upload their slides to SlideShare, so it's like a central place where people can see various slide decks over uh, over time. Now, I, I use SlideShare, and if I go to SlideShare now, this is one of my own uh, slides that I uh, from a presentation I did a while ago. Whether it's mine or any other slide, the fact that all uh, SlideShare has this capability to embed a presentation. So if I click this, look what happens. Click. And up comes this little sharing kind of embed widget that gives you various options. The one I'm interested in is this embed one. If I click this, it generates a bunch of code for me and it gives me some options to modify it, like the size of the presentation and what slide that I wish to even start my presentation at. So let's say I actually want to start on slide four. I now can right click, copy all of this code. And if I come back to Glimmer, here's how I can do this. I come back to this node here, this slide share slide node, Right click, go to the properties tab, up comes a node properties dialog and the one I'm interested in is the description tab. So in the description tab, I can specify the type of description I want and in this case I want text. It might uh, edit, uh, insert embed web page might seem the right one, but that's the entire web page, not just a little part of the web page. So what I actually want is text and I want to go to advanced mode. And advanced mode basically allows me to put in raw HTML, which is basically what's come from SlideShare. So if I say yes to this, do the paste. There's the code from SlideShare. Click save. The node now, if you look very closely, has an attachment icon. And we'll close the video for a moment. And if I click this one, look what happens. Now it actually is going off to SlideShare and it has brought up my presentation and loaded it into page four. And from here, you can use all of the benefits and power of SlideShare to go through this, this slide. Uh, another really good example of this one that's not overly known to people, but it's actually very powerful, is um, embedded documents via Bing. And I could write some more notes in this map on how this is done, but this is quite cool if you're not aware of it. So if I go to Bing, which I have up here, and Google may well do this as well, but Bing, it's, it's easier to demonstrate. If I take some random document, if I type in the word report, and just I only want Word documents, report and file type dot doc. If you're not aware, that's how you tell a search engine, only bring me back results that are inside Word documents. I do a search, I get a whole bunch of Word documents, and you can see here, doc file on these results. The third one down looks interesting, the Australian Workplace Barometer, that seems cool. Notice over here you've got this link called Web View. Watch what happens when I click this. This is a capability that Microsoft have had for a while. This actually loads up Microsoft's online version of Word, Word in a browser, and it actually then loads that document from that website. So you are now literally looking at that document embedded in your browser. Um, what this lets you do is this. I can now click on File, Share, and once again we have that embed capability. If I click on that, we're brought up with a similar kind of uh, um, screen to what you see here. Now what I'm going to do this time, and a bit like SlideShare, you can govern what interaction people have with it. So in this case, I want to start the document on say page 11. I have no idea what's on page 11, but let's find out. The introduction, there you go. And I'm going to make it slightly bigger. I'm going to make this one say 600 pixels instead of, uh, instead of smaller. So having done that now, I come back to my um, I come back to my code down here and I go copy, just like SlideShare. Back into Glimmer, I come to this document and just like what I did before, sorry, this node, I want to embed text in advance mode. I paste my content, I click save and like magic, there's our document embedded. Into, into here. So picture, uh, a really good case study of this is I have mapped uh, corporate policies a lot where you have some very, very big documents and you can kind of summarize the policy in meaningful ways using a visual map. And as you click on the nodes, it takes you to different documents and different pages within that document. Um, so it has a similar power to YouTube where you can bring together um, content in multiple ways and make the relationship between that content really clear. So 
Hopefully that gives you a sense of what Glimmer can do in terms of embedding content. There are many, many other examples of what can be done. Uh, it's actually quite powerful. Uh, all of this content is then searchable too on your corporate internet, which is, which is quite cool. So if you would like to know more about Glimmer and its utility as a knowledge uh, capture, knowledge visualization tool, um, you're best to go to our website, which is www.glimmer.co. In fact, I'll put it here as a note, um, www.glimmer.co. And you can use this little zoom in tool to make sure that you're you have that. Um, that has all sorts of sample maps, it has different use cases and will give you a really good overview of, of how to use Glimmer. Thank you very much for your time.